Yo, what is up everybody? I am super psyched for today's video. We are gonna be talking about my absolute number one biggest photography pet peeve, and that is the white balance. Guys, you really have to learn how to balance the whites in your image and make the image look properly toned. I see so many images of great sunsets or great sunrises that photographers have just tried to artificially enhance by making the image a little more yellow or a little more pink to kind of bring out more color in the clouds. Please do not do this, please, I beg of you. It is my absolute pet peeve. I wanna show you guys in this video how to make sure that you aren't doing that, how to balance your whites correctly. And overall, it's just gonna make your images look really realistic and look really great. I'm gonna show you guys both in Lightroom and Photoshop, because I know there's a lot of you guys out there that only use one of the programs and not the other. So I am going to go ahead and put a little table of contents so you can fast forward to uh, whichever program you use in this video and go from there. Really I hope you guys enjoy this one. Like I said, it's my pet peeve and I really enjoyed making this video. Here we go, guys. All right, so I am here in Lightroom in the develop module like usual. Um, you can do this at any point in your editing process in Lightroom. You can do it at the end, you can do it at the beginning, whatever you want. I usually like to always do it at the beginning and then redial it in at the end if necessary. You can see I've already applied a few basic adjustments here just to help us kind of have a more base photo here to give us a little bit of an overlay, I guess, for what the image is going to look like. So you can see that when we look at this image right now, uh, it looks all right. We've got this kind of nice little sunset going on here. Um, the clouds are nice and pink, but the one thing that I do notice is that this photo is way, way, way too blue. Um, and you may have thought that, you may not have thought that. Either way, it's totally okay. If you didn't think that already, um, it is just something that you just have to practice and learn and look at images and you'll figure out over time. But to me, this is way too blue. Now, I'm not going to tell you guys that you have to perfectly balance your white balance on every photo, but if you are gonna tone it a particular color, at least make it look intentional. There's a lot of photos out there that just don't look intentional when the photo is toned and it just doesn't look good. So this is how you go about doing it in Lightroom. Um, you have your white balance controls up here. Uh, the first thing is first, never go to white balance and change it off of custom or whatever, maybe just do custom controls. I mean, if you try and use one of these, it's just gonna look terrible. So never, never use any of the presets there. Now, you also have this eyedropper tool, and this is something else that I never recommend using. Uh, a lot of photographers will tell you it's a great tool because you can go out on the image and pick a target neutral, so select something that shouldn't be toned one way or another. So these salt flats are actually white, so let's just say that I go ahead and click on that, and now my image looks terrible once again because it's basically just neutralized this color. So don't do that either. Tone the image um, by looking at it. That's just gonna be so much better for you in the long run. You're gonna learn how to tone them yourself a little bit better. And manual is always better than an automatic process for white balance. So what I like to do here is click on the number. Uh, I'll change the temperature and the tint as I see fit. But what I do is I look at the image. And when I look at this image right now, like I said, it is too blue. Now I may also need to change the tint, um, but I know I need to change the temperature because right now it looks way too blue. So I'm going to make sure that I click here. I've got this number selected. I'm gonna hold shift and I'm gonna use my arrow keys. You can see I'm changing it. Now I like doing that better than sliding because when you slide, you can see how small this bar is. A little bit goes a long ways. So you can just use the arrow keys holding the shift bar to go up by 200 or not holding the shift bar to go up or down by 50. Uh, to allow you to change the value here and dial it in to exactly where you want. So that is a really nice way to do that so that you can just look at the image and you don't have to worry at all about um, the actual numerical value or the slider bar. So just do that going up and down. Now, as I go up here, you can see it's probably getting a little too warm. So when I'm balancing this, I'm always thinking about certain things, such as keeping the image balanced. Like I'm looking in the sky and up here should be blue. Uh, when I was out shooting, I remember there was these nice bright pink clouds and up top there was a nice blue sky behind it. So I wanna make sure that stays blue. So when I balance this, I wanna make sure there's still some blue in the sky. Probably about right there is good. Now I don't think the tint needs to be adjusted, but I'm just going to click on it and then go up and down on the arrow keys once again anyways. Now, I want to be really clear here, do not fall into the common pitfall that I see so many photographers fall into these days and say that, oh, I have a really nice sunset, so let's go ahead and just make that a little more pink. And now it looks like the sunset was a lot better, but it just simply doesn't look realistic. So 
remember that in any great sunset, there's always going to be blue tones somewhere in the sky, most likely. Um, and so you want to keep those tones realistic looking. So uh, for that reason, I would just simply slightly adjust this to a spot where I feel like it looks right. Now, the things that you don't want to look at when you're adjusting the temperature in the tint are the clouds because the clouds are always changing depending on what kind of light is hitting them. You want to look at the foreground. And of course, with a really great sunset, the foreground may also be toned as well, but it's not going to be super, super saturated. Um, so that is a way to dial in the temperature and the tint. So that's pretty much how I go about doing things in Lightroom. I'm going to jump in and show you guys how to do it in Photoshop, which is a little bit more manual, gives you a little bit more control, and I do like it a lot better. But I did want to show this for those of you guys that just use Lightroom. All right, so we bounced over into Photoshop. We're going to work on a new photo here. This really pains me to see this photo like this. This is a raw image. The white balance is absolutely awful. Um, the camera does struggle quite a bit when you're shooting into the light like this. So the white balance is not right and it needs to be fixed and it needs to be fixed right away because I can hardly stand to look at this photo anymore. So the way that you do that here in Photoshop is to actually just go down here to your adjustment layers. You're going to go up to color balance and then we are going to have options to adjust the color balance. Now you have options to do the midtones, the shadows, and the highlights. I usually just touch the midtones. Occasionally I'll touch the highlights or the shadows, but not very often. Uh, I'll show you how to do it in this video, but for the most part, just focus on midtones right now while you're still learning. So just like in Lightroom, you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna click here and then you are going to use the arrow keys. If you shift and go one direction or another, it goes by 10 points. If you don't hold shift, it just goes by one point as you can see. So. The nice thing about doing it here in Photoshop is that we've actually got multiple options. Uh, we've got cyan to red, magenta to green, and yellow to blue. So in Lightroom, we had magenta to green and yellow to blue, but we did not have cyan to red. So it's really nice to have all of those extra options now. So the first thing that I noticed about this image is it is way too blue. So let's just go ahead and hold shift and hit this down a couple times. Now I want to be careful to not go too far. Now this looks like it's too far to me because everything back here is tinted yellow and that's a key giveaway. The stuff that's in my background over here, it wasn't really saturated or colored. It was just kind of gray and boring. So that's how it should look in my image. So I'm going to go back towards blue a little bit. Probably right about there feels right to me. And the other thing that I really like about Photoshop is I can simply just toggle this layer to see the before and after. Now the other thing that I'm noticing in this photo is that it's appearing a little too cyan. And I'm looking at this little white stripe in this rock here. This rock is like orangish red. So it shouldn't have these little like bluish green tones. So I'm gonna add in some red here. And you can see if I hold shift, that's quite too much. So I'm not gonna hold shift. I'm just gonna hit it a couple points here. And now maybe I'm noticing that there might be maybe too much magenta. So I might add in some green probably about to right there. Now you can see here in Photoshop, a little bit goes a very, very long way. So we gotta be really careful with how far we're doing it. You can see I've only added two points on each of these top two sliders. And let's toggle that. So you can see that now I'm in a much more workable spot. The things that I like about this image is these clouds over here are a little bit blue, which seems right. And then these clouds around the sun are a little bit yellow, which seems right. Now, if I had cranked this way too much, all the clouds would be the same color and it just wouldn't look right. So I really like balancing the white balance this way because I can make sure that I've got a wide range of all the tones represented in my image. My blues are still well represented. My yellows are well represented. My oranges are all here. My reds are all here. Everything looks really well balanced. So when you're balancing the white balance, just remember it's like balancing a teeter-totter. Go back and forth until you find the spot that looks the most natural to you. Alrighty guys, I feel so much better after putting that out on the table. I'm gonna be sending this link to everybody whenever they ask for help on white balance. It's seriously my huge pet peeve because it, honestly takes down so many great photos. I really hope that this video was helpful for you guys and that you can use this over and over again to properly balance your images and make sure that they look just absolutely fantastic. Thank you guys so much for checking out this week's video. Feel free to let me know if you have any questions down below in the comments. I will make sure to get back to you guys. Thank you guys so much and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.